guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today I wanted to highlight some of my favorite polishes that came out in the year 2022, which is this year, the year that we're in. And then ramble on at you for like a few minutes each about why I love that polish. I did my best to make sure that I picked polishes that only came out this year. This isn't like my favorite polishes that I acquired in 2022. It's my favorite polishes that I acquired in 2022 that also released in 2022. You get what I'm saying? I hope so. I hope that that made sense. Please forgive me if I make a mistake. I'm pretty sure all of these came out this year. I Some of the indies I was a little rocky on. I wasn't sure. But the mainstreams I'm, I'm like almost 100% sure came out this year. And I separated it by indie and mainstream. I want to show you my favorite mainstreams that came out this year, as well as my favorite indies. And I'm going to do five mainstreams and 10 indies because this year was definitely indie heavy for me. And so while I could pick 10 mainstreams if I really had to, I just feel like there aren't as many mainstreams that came out this year that I was super passionate about and super excited about in the same way that I felt about a lot of the indie polishes here on my list. So we're gonna do our five mainstreams first, get them out of the way. And then we're gonna do our indies. And I'm gonna do something that I've never done before. Usually I show you guys stuff in no particular order because I'm gonna be honest, ranking things gives me anxiety. And I'm not saying like, oh, I'm a little anxious about it. Like I literally feel uncomfortable and like worked up about putting things in a particular order because I feel bad. I don't want anything to feel bad even though it's an object, I'm like, I'm sorry, you're in number five, you know? It's like, I feel guilty to the item. And that's a really weird thing to feel. But this time I did it just for you guys. <laughs> and it was hard, but it was actually probably, probably good for me in a way. So with the mainstreams, I'm going to start at number five, all the way to my number one polish of the year. And then indies, I'll start at number 10, going all the way to my number one polish of the year. Let me know if you guys guessed the number ones. I'm sure it won't be hard for you because you guys all watch my channel and you know the polishes that I talk about over and over and over again. So let's get started. So number five on my list of mainstreams for the year, and this was kind of surprising because uh, this is not from a brand that I would ever expect to have in a top five for me. It's just not a brand that I visit very often, but that is OPI's Ochre the Moon. And this is a very recent get for me, but I absolutely love the color. I got it, as I'm sure you guys have seen, and I was having a nail emergency. I was attending a wedding in upstate New York and I needed something. And this was the only one left in Ulta and it was a color that I was that I was really drawn to. It's a really beautiful mustard yellow. I feel like with mustards, they lean a little bit of brown, a little bit of a murky green. This one is more brown than like that murkier green side of things. And it's just, it's a great color for fall. I will say the formula on this is a little bit thin. So even though I did get full coverage in two coats, it still looks very thin on the nail, not patchy, but just ridgy. You can see all the ridges because it just settles so thinly. So definitely recommend a very thick top coat for something like this, but it's a great color. It's beautiful. I mean, you can fix it with top coat. It's not a big deal. Number four is from China Glaze and this is Arctic Confetti. This came out in their Dippin' Dots collection this summer. You guys know I'm not a huge white wearer, even when it's a white base with something that adds a little bit color, but there are exceptions to that rule. And this is very much one of them. I love the whole collection. I was very excited by it when I heard that it was coming out. I mean, look at the little cap. It's so precious. But I just, I, it was hard to pick a favorite. Even I went back and I watched my video again because I'm like, did you pick a favorite? No, I didn't. I was like, they're all my favorite. And so I was like, all right, well, if I have to pick one to really round out that collection for me, it would definitely be this one. It's just, it's just fun. And it looks like a delicious candy. So I kind of want to eat it, but I'm not going to eat it because that's nail polish and you're not supposed to eat it. Okay. Number three, I don't know if you can call this a mainstream brand, but it is a mainstream fast food chain. And that is from Raising Cane. And this one is called Glossy and Saucy. On the bottom, it makes sure to tell you that it is a novelty item and it is not edible, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. Just kidding, I'm not gonna eat it. I'm not, not gonna eat nail polish. I've actually never had Raising Cane, like 
it's a chicken restaurant. We have exactly one in Michigan, as far as I can tell, and I'm pretty sure it just opened like a couple months ago. And listen, I'm not about to drive an hour to go eat some chicken because I think it's like only an hour away from me, but it's just like, it's chicken. I'll, I can eat chicken anywhere. But the marketing <laughs> for this stupid nail polish was so good. The whole idea behind this polish, it just, for me, it was genius. I mean, I love food-based polishes anyways, you guys know that. But the idea that a fast food chain was like, let's make our signature sauce into a nail polish, that's absurd. Am I on that marketing team? Was I there in spirit? And I was just like, you guys, you know what you should do? Sauce polish. I, like whoever pitched this, I want to meet them and just shake their hand. And again, like maybe this should be an indie, but like maybe I'm stretching it, putting it in the mainstream, but I just feel weird putting the sauce polish in the indie brands. I don't know. But yeah, that's number three. Even though like the, co the color is disgusting. It's the execution of the overall idea into the polish that really kills it for me in a good way. Like it's killing it, you know? Uh, number two is two polishes because I'm cheating, but it's my list so I get to make the rules. And that is the Velveeta and Nails Ink Duo. I don't care what you guys say. I don't care what anybody says. This is the funniest thing that happened all year. This was like the outrage that people had over this nail polish. I watched so many anti hauls on beauty YouTube of people just getting so worked up. They were like, that's disgusting. Nobody wants this. Meanwhile, I have like nine people being like, Hillary, you need this. Hillary, have you seen this? And I was like, literally the second somebody sent this to me, I ordered it. It was, I didn't even consider the price. I was like, I have to have those. There's no reason to not own these. And it says the most disgusting thing on here. It says creamy, smooth nails. <laughs> and I love that. And this La Dolce Velveeta and Finger Food are the names of the two polishes. It's just, it's a fun gimmick. I know that they're plain cream colors and that I could easily dupe these out in my collection, but it's just, it's cheese. I gotta have it. I can't live without these polishes. And number one on my personal list of polishes that came out in 2022, if you guys don't know what I'm about to say, I feel like you've been living under a rock, but it is absolutely Orly's Elysian Fields. I am obsessed with this polish. I want to bathe in this polish. I wish I could get a shirt that was this color. Maybe pants, maybe pants this color. That would be cool. That would be weird. Maybe a hat. I just want everything in this color right now. I'm just, I can't get over it. I've worn this at least three times this year and we only just got it recently and that says a lot when you have a collection as big as mine to be wearing something multiple times that close together it's just this is everything to me quite literally the best worst color of all time i have no notes orly keep doing this i guess that's a note isn't it i love it though so those were my top five mainstreams. I doubt anybody was surprised by that. So now let's move on to my top 10 indie slash boutique, I guess, type polishes. And this was tough to rank. It's a lot harder. I don't know why. It's like something with mainstreams where they don't really have a face. I'm like, it's fine. I'll put them in ranking orders and I'll be mean to them and I'll bully them. But when it comes to indies, some of them are like smaller makers and I don't like saying as harsh things sometimes for the sake of being jokey. You know, like with China Glaze, you guys know that's my favorite brand, but I will harp on them and I'll like be goofy about it. But when it comes to indie brands, I feel like because it's a smaller community, I don't want to hurt feelings. So ranking was really tough, but these are my top 10. So it's like they're in the top spot regardless. So maybe I should stop being so sensitive. Number 10 in my top 10 indie slash boutiques that came out in 2022 uh, would be, weirdly, Hollow Taco's Glow in the Dark Taco. I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about this. I was just like, it's just a Glow in the Dark top coat. Everybody does them. Well, not everybody, but like, or I have one from Orly. I have one from Simple Colors. How special could this one be? This one is amazing. It needs like minimal charging and it is so bright. It's the brightest glow in the dark top coat I've ever owned, I've ever seen. The only downside is, I mean, look at how milky this is in the bottle. It is very opaque. So it is going to somewhat affect the color you put it over. And especially like darker colors, it will kind of wash them out a little bit. Not too bad, but it's just still like, keep in mind that that is a possibility. 
Uh, but like I said, it's like so vibrantly green, so bright, so fun. I don't think it's on the website anymore, but they did say it was going to be seasonal, I believe. So definitely worth picking up if that comes back around. Okay, number nine might be the only stretch on this list, and that is BKL's Dumacorn. And I'm counting this because I'm pretty sure, yeah, it looks like this one might have come out in 2021, but it came back in the Polish Pickup Rewind. So, you know, it's it's fine. It's 2022. Now, I am gonna be honest, I didn't want this when it came out. Like, I was just like, it just looks like a really sheer polish. I didn't, like, care too much. Like, BKL, if I'm gonna buy shears from any brand, it's gonna be Bees Knees Lacquer. They have some of the best shears, the most interesting shears. I, I prefer shearer polishes from BKL over any other brand that puts them out. But this was just not one that was calling my name. But because it was Rewind, those are like some of the most hyped up polishes and everybody was like, you gotta get this one, bring this one back. It's so good, bring back Dumacorn. And I'm like, well, if everybody wants it, maybe I secretly want it, but I just don't know that I want it yet. So maybe I should buy it because I definitely secretly want it. So I bought it because I was like, if I don't, I'm gonna be mad at myself. And it's one of those that it's so hard to capture in photos. And that's probably why I was just like, eh, whatever, when I saw it online. But having worn it, I was like, okay, I finally get it. I, I do understand the hype around it. It is a very beautiful polish, very shifty, very, very hard to photograph though. So even, you know, I'll put up my swatch photo, but it's not going to do it a justice to seeing it with your own little eyeballs, you know? So keep in mind, keep that in mind because trust me, it's beautiful. Number eight for the year was Cirque Colors Citron Jelly. I think this was a spring release, I want to say. And I decided that this one should not be named Citron Jelly, but in fact, Butter Jelly, because it looks like melted butter. I think when I posted about this originally, or talked about this originally in a video, I went on a very excessive rant about how I used to eat butter as a child, which I don't remember doing. I Like, this is a story that was told to me. I gotta make that distinctly clear. I don't recall ever eating butter on its own but my father claims that I did. And I told that story, and then um, a little while later, Fanatic here and Danny Shouts uh, over on Instagram and on Twitch, they started a podcast called Two Lacquered Ladies. And they mentioned me in the first episode, and a couple of people messaged me, and they're like, hey, this podcast talked about you. And I was like, oh no, like, I'm canceled. I did something wrong, like, right? No, they were talking about how I used to eat butter as a child. <laughs> And then, you know, I, like I listen to podcasts. It's great. It's fun. If you don't listen to Two Lacquered Ladies, I'll link it down below. It is a lot of fun to listen to. But also, the next time I saw my dad, I, I wanted to sound kind of important. And I was like, Dad, I got mentioned in a podcast. And he goes, oh, what did they say? And I was like, don't, it's not important. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not relevant to this conversation. Just I just know that I was in a podcast. They said my name in a podcast. That's all you need to know. Had nothing to do with butter. Number seven is Starly Pluto. Um, this is kind of more representing the whole planet's collection, but that came out in not 2022. I just acquired it in 2022, but I'm pretty sure Pluto was one that didn't come out until this year. And it's just a whole like magnetics collection surrounding the planets and uh, Pluto got a little bit shafted and <laughs> they got delayed and all that. But it's this beautiful green magnetic, very rich like emerald tone, jewel tone. And this is the collection that definitely bought it on a whim. Not a whim, but it was just like Everybody else was really excited for it and I wanted to be excited for it. And then I think it was like my birthday month and all that. And so I was just like, whatever, I'm going to get it. And then I was like, but Hillary, you suck at magnetics. Why did you buy this? And I made a magnetics video just talking about like my struggle with magnetics and me trying out some magnetic stuff. And I got a lot of good feedback. So when I got this collection, I tried it out. Like a lot of those tips, one being shake up the bottle in between every couple of nails so that magnetic pigment kind of is always floating around 
And ever since then, it's been so much better when it comes to using magnetics. And so this definitely makes the list because it really invigorated my appreciation and excitement for magnetic polishes. And also I love green. Number six is from Sassy Sauce. And this one is called RAR. This is one that I, I'm pretty sure came out in 2022, but it was hard for me to tell. Um, so we're just going to go with it. My boyfriend, when we were at Polish and Beauty Expo, saw this on a table at the meet and greet and kind of like rushed over to it and was like, that looks delicious. It looks like, I can't even remember what sauce he said it looks like, but he was like obsessed with it. And then of course the name is Sassy Sauce. So it's really ingrained in his brain. And now he's always just like, so what's going on with Sassy Sauce lately? Like, like he, it's the only brand that he cares to follow. He's just, he wants to know about Sassy Sauce all the time. It's the only brand that he can remember off the top of his head when it comes to nail polish, which is so funny. But it got me interested in the brand because I had never tried anything from them before. And when we saw this polish at the meet and greet, I was like, okay, yeah, I have to get that one when the shop's open. And then I ended up getting a pretty big handful of polishes from Sassy Sauce. And this one, it's just like a really beautiful mac and cheesy orange. It's got like these reddish purpley micro glitters running through it, as well as an orangey yellow shimmer kind of flashing through it as well. Just very fun. Makes me think of macaroni and cheese, like I said. And it's hard for me because I love the concept of orange polishes, but it's I don't meet many oranges that I do like. But this is exactly my kind of orange, so made the list. Number five is another polish that sparked interest and love for a brand that I had never tried before. That is Great Lakes Lacquers Kitchen Kippy. And this one, I, I had been wanting to try this brand for a while because it's a Michigan based brand and I am a Michigan based Hillary, I guess. Um, I'm from Michigan. I live in Michigan. It's not very exciting, but you know, we're shaped like a mitten. That's cool. I don't know. As I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to buy like Michigan based brands. I think it's kind of fun to like support the local brands. And also a lot of them do like stuff themed around Michigan. So I'm like, hey, I know that. I know that theme. I know that place. And so during a polish pickup where they did, uh, the theme was something like, like state parks and like landmarks. That rhymes. So it has to be right. State parks and landmarks. I feel like that's correct. Um, it was in May of 2022. But I wasn't super interested in the theme because I'm just not a big like geographical person. It's just not super interesting to me. But then I saw this one, which it's Kitchen Kippy is a place in Michigan. And I was like, well, Michigan brand, Michigan place. I love blues. Let's do it. It's all the stars aligned. And I got it. And when I got it in my hand, I was blown away because it was better than what I expected, which rarely happens. A lot of times you see swatches and you go, oh, that looks really pretty. You get it in the mail and you're like, yeah, it's about the same. Or like, oh, I, I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit better than this because the brand maybe photoshopped their swatches or something. Not going to name any names. But um, I got this polish and I put it on and I was like, oh my God, this is like 10 times better than what it looked like on the website, which never happens. It like, gl I mean, in the bottle, it looks like it's glowing, but on the nail, it, it has that effect as well. It is just stunning. Maybe I'm biased because it's like I said, like double Michigan and it's blue, but I just love this polish. And this, it was the only polish I bought from them before I went to Polish and Beauty Expo. And let me tell you, like, I, I didn't know much about this brand. I didn't know about the following and like people's interest in them. Usually I feel like I know like how popular a brand is. Like BKL, I'm like, yeah, they're crazy popular. Everybody knows that. KB Shimmer, everybody loves KB Shimmer. You know, it's like stuff like that. I, I, I got my finger on the pulse as far as that goes. But I did not expect that line. That line for Great Lakes Lacquer was so long. I don't even think that the maker expected the line to be that long because it seemed like they were just hammered the whole time, just slammed. And I, I don't think that she expected to be. And it was really exciting for them, I think. I mean, I'm excited for them because clearly people love their products. But I was just like, oh my God. And I'm glad that I got in their line when I did because then they opened up general admission and then the line never went away again. So I have a small handful from Great Lakes Lacquer. I love them. I think their bottles are a little bit weird, but I like it. Their cap is really smooth. I like that. I don't know. That was a weird thing to do. But anyways, I like, I like this brand. I like this polish. Number four is Wildflower Lacquer's Stolen Flame. 
This is still the only wildflower lacquer I own. I don't know why. I feel like a lot of their Polish Pickup offerings don't usually scream to me, but I do, I love this one. I got this one from Polish Pickup. This was from the April one, Periodic Table. Um, I just don't pay attention to their launch schedule. And so I always miss out on the ordering window. And then I'm like, oh shoot, I should check out Wildflower Lacquer. And then it's like, oh, you missed it again. So I need to like pay better attention to that. But if they're anything like this one, they're awesome. This is just the perfect sapphire blue. I wore it for my birthday. I love the way it looks matte. It is a flaky bomb, like to the nth degree, but the flakies are much smaller, so they don't stick up everywhere. It's very easy to get a smooth manicure with these. And I, it's it's kind of almost purple leaning, but I swear it's blue, you know? It's, it's just beautiful. It looks like, I mean, it's called Stolen Flame. It definitely looks like a blue flame. I love it. All right, we're down to our top three and number three would have to be sweet and sour lacquers i like it when the red water comes out this is a dark kind of mossy green with a red orange yellow shimmer running through it this came out during september's polish pickup for like the spooky kind of polishes it is based off of salad fingers which is i believe it was like a flash cartoon uh that came out basically when i was in middle school and high school I was obsessed with Salad Fingers. They are all on YouTube if you want. David Firth is the creator. They are a little bit gory, so don't look them up if you don't like blood or disgusting things, which I think is probably a lot of people. I love them, but um, I don't know. I, I had like a Salad Fingers t-shirt, <laughs> but I saw this when it uh, when it was first announced when they were previewing all the polishes for that polish pickup. And I was like, if nothing else, if absolutely nothing else, I have to get this one. I love it. I've worn it a couple times. I wore it on my toes and on my hands and it's just perfect. It's perfect. I mean, listen, I love any kind of nasty looking green. I mean, Elysian Fields, hello. I, I just like these yucky colors right now in my life. I like gross things. That's why I'm dating my boyfriend. Um, Love him. But yeah, I, I've been getting more interested in sweet and sour lacquer as well. I picked up a few from them at Polish and Beauty Expo and I'm excited to try more from them. But this is just, this is one of the peak polishes of 2022 for me. They did release some sibling shades. I didn't end up picking them up because as much as I really enjoy this finish and I love the names of the sibling shades, I just feel like they peaked with this one. And maybe I'll regret it and maybe I'll want the other three and have the like the whole quad. But for now, I am very content with just having this one. Number two is one that I haven't really talked about a lot on my channel. So this might come out of left field for a lot of you guys. But because of Orly this year, I have found myself getting like really into art in a way that I... When I was a kid, I was really interested in reading about artists and I found myself back in that position, really interested in art and art styles and artists and just things like that. And so Danny Vienna released this kind of artist's collection where I can't remember how many polishes were in the collection, but every polish was based off of a specific artist. And this one is called Klimt. And obviously based off of Gustav Klimt, the painter, I think that most people, if you don't know who he is, you would recognize the painting that this is quite obviously based off of, which is The Kiss. And I saw this polish and I immediately associated it with that painting before I even knew what this whole collection was, what this particular polish was called. I just, I've said this before, but I just got to say Danny Vienna can make you see something in a little bottle of paint, 11 milliliters of paint. They put 11 milliliters of paint into a, into a bottle and you already know what it is. Like without being told, no context clues. They just do a really great, amazing, perfect job of taking inspiration and condensing it down into this little bottle. I it's talent. It's pure raw talent. But yeah, because of Orly doing the color pass themed all around different art styles, I found myself just more and more drawn to art and reading about it and just generally interested in it. And this is one of the paintings that I found myself really appreciating in a way that I hadn't in the past. And so seeing that, I had to get it. 
because it's so perfect. I'm actually next year, my next big cross stitch project is going to be creating a mini gallery out of like cross stitches like this big and then getting stupidly ornate frames for all of them and making like a little gallery wall. That'll take some time, but ideal, perfect, no notes. Okay, and then number one for 2022, can you guys guess? I'm gonna wait, hmm, what is it? Oh yeah, it's Envy Lacquer's Grandpa's Garden. Obviously you guys knew that, you're not stupid. You knew, you knew. I have probably an unhealthy connection with this polish at this point. I, It's the most beautiful polish, for not only the way it looks, but for the story behind it. The maker posted a photo of her late grandfather in his garden, and it was just such a vibrant and lush, beautiful, like the, the saturation of the colors, just a beautiful photo. And her grandfather loved to garden, and so that is kind of what this polish is for. And for me, I lost one of my grandfathers very young, but I was very close to him. And he hated his yard, but it still makes me think of him. <laughs> he did not mow the lawn at all. But um, my other grandfather, my granddad, you know, he and my grandmother, they spent hours in the yard, you know, maintaining it, putting the garden together, and he would help my grandma do everything. And unfortunately, my grandparents are reaching the age where that is not possible anymore. And so this polish just brings back a lot of those memories for me because when I would stay over with them, you know, they would be in the yard and I would be playing out there with them. I would help him rake and, and they would mow. And, and it just, you know, it's like those little, those little moments in your life that end up mattering the most. And this is so stupid that I'm getting like upset. Um, but it's like those little things that end up having some of the biggest impacts on me at least, you know, it's, it's like my grandparents have done so many big things for me in my life, but it's the little details that you go back to in your mind. And, and so grandpa's garden circling back to the polish before I cry on YouTube, Hillary, get it together. Um, it's just, it's like the perfect lush garden. It's that green, it's got reflective glitter and it has all these beautiful flakies in there that are like rainbowy, not rainbowy, but like they look like the colors of flowers. And it's just perfect. It's a great reminder. It's a great memory. And if I ever can get myself to use this to the point where it's gone, I, I will probably be sad. So um, yeah, Grandpa's Garden is my favorite polish of 2022. It might be my favorite polish of all time just because of the feelings and memories it evokes. And um, I hope that there is never a single polish again that <laughs> evokes this much emotion out of me because I don't like feeling this way. So anyways, that is my top 10 indie list. And then you guys saw my top five mainstream. I just didn't have that many mainstreams this year that I was like, woohoo about, you know? There were a handful of indies that I think would have made this list had it not been for the fact that they didn't come out this year. Um, like Death Valley Nails Bone was definitely a strong contender, but then I was like, I don't think that came out this year at all. So I didn't put it on here. But yeah, let me know your guys' number one uh, mainstream release and your number one indie release. It could be a whole collection. It could be a single polish. I just want to know. I love seeing what you know you guys really love. It's always fun to see what other people's favorites are. I just like how even though we all have such different tastes, we can kind of come together and like love a singular thing. So let me know down below in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.